If you got your Bible, turn to Psalm, six, Psalm 18, 16 through 19. Psalm 18, 16 through 19. You could turn there. I'm also going to reference Luke 19, 10. If you want to make note of that, or if you want to even turn to it so you can look at both, that's fine with me. Can I tell you that the Son of Man, he came to seek and to save the lost? That's what it says in Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So if you're wondering why he came, that's why he came. And if you're wondering what your part is, your part is to get up every day, fall in love with him all over again, and to go find somebody who's lost and tell them that there's a God who's real and tell them that there's a God who loves them. You have a part to play in this thing. How many of you know I have a part to play at my house? I have a part to play. And men in the room, if you don't know what your part is, don't worry. Your wife will tell you what your part is, all right? I have a part to play at my house. It's my responsibility in my home. I'm supposed to take out the trash, all right? Does anybody, is it anybody's job you're the trash person at your house, right? That's your job. Some of you kids, that's your assignment, right? You want your $5 allowance every week? You got to take that trash out, right? I, 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 my part is to take the trash out. And I know I don't have anybody in here like this, okay? But I'm just, I'm just talking from personal experience. Here's what I'll do. I'll go up to the trash can, and if it's full, this is what I'll do. I'll press it down a little bit more. Let me know what I'm talking about. And I'll do that over and over again. I mean, I'll just press, I'll just keep pressing it. And, and you know, I'm saying things like, well, I, you know, we can get more in there. You know, I'm trying to be economical, you know. I'm really being lazy, you know, that's what I'm really doing. So I'm pressing it down, and I'll press it down so much, you can't even get it out of the trash can. How I many you know what I'm talking about? It takes two people to get it out. And you get it, and the other one holds the can while the other one pulls the bag. By the time you get it out, you've done ripped the bag. Trash just fell everywhere, you know. But I'm going to tell you, if I don't get to it, I don't take it out. Here's what will happen. My wife, she'll get to it. She'll take it out. Somehow she'll get it out without ripping the bag. I think she's a magician or something, you know. She'll get it tied up, you know. And this is what she does. She'll open the garage and she'll put the, she'll put the bag out there on the steps of the garage. She's telling me two things. One, you're slipping on your part. Right. And the other thing she's saying is, I hope you break your neck. That's what she's saying. Right. <laughs> she's telling me that, you know, that's my cue. I, I, I did a little bit, but you got to get it to the can. You know, uh, another part that I play at my house is as is, is I'm in charge of cutting the grass, you know, and and, and I, I enjoy cutting the grass. You know, I like to eat weed eat. I like to edge. I like to do all those sorts of things. Uh, I enjoy it, but I don't like to do flower bed work. And I, how many of you know there's a difference? All right. I think it's something about squatting. I don't have the body type to squat, you know. If I squat this down, I might not get it back up. You know what I'm saying? And so I hate doing flower bed work. And a few years ago while the pandemic was happening and we were having to stay at home, uh, I was having to find, thing, find things to do around the house. And, and so I'm out there one day and, I, and I'm doing the flower bed work. I'm, I'm picking the weeds. I'm doing my part. I'm trimming the hedges, you know. And, and, and this is a house that we lived in. We live in a different house now. But I I was out here and I only had like four or five bushes, you know, but it was my, it was my bushes, you know. And I'm taking care of them and I, and I get it all done and I get it all cleaned up, you know, and I step back and I think, man, that looks good. I admired my work, you know. And then all of a sudden all that gets broken up because I hear my wife frantically run out into the garage and this is what she says. She says, oh my gosh, Brooks. Is Griffin out here with you? Now, I have two sons, but at the time I only had one. And he was, you know, he's seven now, but at the time he was, I don't know, he was two and a half, going on three years old, you know. Is Griffin out here with you? And y'all know where I'm going with this, right? He wasn't nowhere to be seen, you know. And I said, no, he's not out here. She said, you didn't, you didn't see him? No. He, he must have run behind me, you know. And all I could think in that moment was this. We lived out by a main road and cars were going up and down the whole time. And I thought, oh my gosh, if Griffin gets out there to that road, he's, he could get killed. My heart just dropped. How many of you ever had a child get lost? It's the worst feeling ever. Here's what I did as his father. I began to run 
through the neighborhood. And I begin to call his name. Griffin, Griffin, Griffin. I begin to just call his name. as like, Maybe he'll, he'll hear my voice, you know. And I go around, and we lived by a little cul-de-sac at the time. And I, and I went around near that cul-de-sac. And there was a lady in that cul-de-sac. And she was out doing her part in the neighborhood, all right? She was what I would like to call as the neighborhood Karen. Does anybody know what that is? The busybody. How many know what I'm talking about? And if your name's Karen in here, I am so sorry they have come up with this terminology with your name on it, all right? But she was the one always on the Facebook page wanting to know if you've paid your HOA dues or not. You know who I'm talking about. Always out in people's business. But she was out there that day. She was doing her part right on cue, you know. And she says, hey, Brooks, are you looking for your kid? Yes, I'm looking for my son. Have you seen him? Yeah, I saw him. You didn't get him? No, he was too fast for me. Where'd he go? She points out to the main road. I thought, oh. I begin to run more. And I get down to the end, and I, and I take a sharp left to go out towards that main road. And while I'm on my way, there it is. I see another lady out in our neighborhood. She's out there doing her part. The walker. How many know what I'm talking about? The one that's just always out walking all times of day. Doing her part. Right on cue, right? And I see her, and I see these two white little legs, and they're kicking out from her side, you know. And I recognized them anywhere, you know. And she stopped and she said, hey, Brooks. And I said, yeah. She said, is this your son? Yeah. She said, I got him right before he crossed the main road. Here's what happened. She sits him down on the ground. And he saw me. And when he saw me, this is what he did. He began to run to me. I began to run to him. And here's what happened. We collided. And I wrapped my arms around him. And I began to hug him. And I began to kiss his face. And here's what I didn't do in the moment. I didn't spank them. I didn't correct them. I didn't come down on them. You know, the correction and all that stuff, the guidance, all that stuff could come later on. All I did when I found them was this. I just wanted to love them. And I told them how valuable he was to me. I knew the value in what I had. And whether he realized it or not, he brought me so much joy. Can I tell you today, if you don't hear me say anything else, you have no clue how much joy you bring the Father today. You, you have no clue how valuable you are to this thing. You have no clue how important you are. I need you to hear me say that today. We get in this habit in church and we say things like, oh, I wasn't worth it. I wasn't worthy of it. And I get, I get all that talk, all right? I get the church. I get that. Can I tell you when you read his word, that's not the way he feels about you? Can I tell you there's a God that loves you today? There's a God who's crazy about you today? And he thought you were worth the life of his son. That's what he thinks of you today. So if you're wondering about what he thinks of you today, he gave up his one and only just so he might be able to have a relationship with you. You have no clue. How many of you remember where you were when he found you? Psalms 18, 16 through 19 says, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster. I love this part. But the Lord was my support. 
He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me <laughs> because he delighted in me. Yes. He delights in you today. He delights in you today. He has a purpose for your life today. I want you to hear that. He has a destiny for you today. Most of you in the room, you'll never stand behind a microphone and preach. Most of you will never stand up here and lead worship. Most of you won't. You do other things. But your, your role and your part is just as important. It's vital. And before living free can get from here to there, somebody's got to step up and say, I'll do my part. I'll do my part in the kingdom. If you'll do your part, you'll get where you need to go. I believe that today. I believe that today. I'll never forget, me and Brittany, we were, we were youth pastoring in Hendersonville. And this is before we had kids. I'll never forget, we walked out of the fellowship hall on a Wednesday night. And I go out to the coffee bar, you know. And, and there's a sign-up sheet laying out there. How many of you know that we like a sign-up sheet in church, don't we? And I see the header on the sheet, and it says... White water rafting trip. And I thought, oh, and it got my attention, you know. And then it said, the Okoe River, and, it, and out in parentheses it said, Olympic course. And I thought, you know, I got the body of an Olympic athlete. Why would I not want to go white water rafting on the Olympic course? How many of you have been white water rafting before, right? And so I went ahead and I signed up. Signed my name in big letters, you know. I thought, I'm going on this trip, you know. I'm going on this journey. And then I thought... I wonder if Brittany wants to go, my wife. I wonder, if she want, I wonder if she wants to go with me on this trip. And I thought, I should sign her up. And I thought, maybe I should ask her first, you know. Men in the room, that's always a good idea. Go ahead and ask you. But I'm sitting there thinking, why would she not want to go with me? I'll go ahead and just sign her up anyway without asking her. So that's what I did. <laughs> That was a bad mistake, you know. Signed her up, you know. And I go home and I announce to her, I'm so excited. I said, hey, listen, we're going whitewater rafting next weekend. She said, what are you talking about? I said, the church, we're going on a whitewater rafting trip. She said, I I'm not going. I said, oh, yeah, we are because I signed, I signed us up for it. I signed me and you up for it. She, she looked at me. She said, you did what? I said, I signed us up for the trip. She said, have you ever been whitewater rafting before? I said, no. She said, well, if you had, you wouldn't have signed us up for it. Here's what I thought we were going to go do. I thought we were going to go float down a river on an inner tube, you know, and I was going to drink a Capri Sun. You know, that's what I thought we were. I thought, well, I thought well, what we were signing up for, you know. She said, y'all, if you had been rafting before, I'm telling you right now, you wouldn't have signed us up for it. And I said, we got to go. And she said, well, I'm not. I said, we got to go because I signed us up for it. Because if there's one thing I can't stand in church, it's a bunch of people who sign up for stuff and then don't show up for it. Pastor Ricky's on his way back, okay? He'll be here next week, all right? If you didn't like what I just said. <laughs> you know, on this journey of ministry, and you, for you that have done ministry full time, you'll know this along the way, that people are really good about giving their opinions. They're really good about jumping up and saying, yeah, we should do that. They're really good about putting their name on it. But I tell you where they fall short. Showing up to do the rest. Can I tell you, what a person who signs up and don't show up is, that's a pretender. And I hope that's not you today. And I didn't just come here, to, I came here to provoke your heart today a little bit. I came here to encourage you to tell you, if you sign up for it, you follow this thing through. People who sign up and show up, we call those contenders. So you're either pretending or you're contending. I'm just going to tell you right now, it's, 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 it's easy just to show up once a week to church. Now, that's the easy part. It's easy to come to church when they have, you know, maybe a eating on the ground, you know, a potluck or a homecoming dinner. That's easy, you know. What are you doing on Monday and Tuesday? Are you doing your part? Because if I was to go around this room and I was to ask you your story, some of you it might be a pretty good story. Others of you in the room, if I was to hear your story, I might hear the most horrific story I've ever heard in my life. 
Can I tell you that he says in his word that it's not easy? Can I tell you that in his word he says there'll be trouble? There's going to be trouble. The river of life is going to flow. I'm just going to tell you that. How many of you have been through rough times in your life, right? There will be trouble, but his word also says that he'll be there with you through it. Can I tell you, he's with you today, and you have a part to play. So here comes the, the day of the trip. We, we get up. I get dressed. And when I say I get dressed, I put my feet into some slides. I was making a fashion statement, you know. Put on my swimsuit. Put on my T-shirt. And I go and I get in the truck, and I'm waiting on my wife, you know. And she wasn't coming out, so here's what I did. I honked the horn, you know. Not a good idea, men, all right? I'm giving y'all some marriage advice. Don't honk the horn. Don't dry off with the decorative towels while we're on the subject, right? You know, And I'm sitting there, and I thought, well, she still ain't coming out. Maybe I should honk it a second time. So I go ahead and honk it a second time. Boy, that's, that, that's not good, you know? And she comes out, and this is what she does. She comes out, and she looks at me. She locks eyes with me. And she walks to the truck, but she never breaks eye contact. She's just like... Gets in, she's looking at me, you know, and I said, are you ready to go? She didn't say a word. I said, okay, she's ready, you know, all right. Then we take out to our church, and I get there in the back parking lot, and there's the church van. All the doors are open. That was our form of transportation. How many of you know a, a church van? That's where dreams go to die, ain't it? You know, the church van, the armrests are broke. You find a, a French fry from 1987 in there. You can still eat, still edible. Windshield wipers don't work that good, you know what I'm talking about? The church van, you know? Smells like body odor and death, you know what I'm talking about, right? Nothing but the best for our kids, you know? <laughs> we get on it, and she, we're getting in, and she goes, where's your bag at? I said, what, what bag? She said, your bag. I said, I don't have a bag. What are you talking about? She said, your clothes. I said, I've got clothes on. She said, no, 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 you've got a swimsuit on. Where's your clothes at for when you get wet? And I said, what do you mean get wet? She said, what? I said, what are you talking about getting wet? I'm not going to get wet. She goes, what do you mean? I said, we're going rafting. We're not going swimming. And this is how she responded. You might be the biggest idiot I have ever met in my entire life, you know. <laughs> and she gets on the van. She didn't say no more to me, you know. She has her bag, you know. And we take out to the Okoe River. Here we go on the journey, right? We've signed up and we've showed up. We're on it, right? I'm eating a bag of Funyuns and drinking a sun drop, you know? And we're almost there. We're getting close. And I look out the window and there's trees and there's openings. And, and I see the river <laughs> flowing like that. And I think, oh, man, look at that water, you know? And, and I see rafts strung up on, in the trees with nobody on them. And I thought, oh, what is that, you know? And then over the crest of the water, I see this raft come over with it. A group full of people on it, and they're white knuckling the sides, you know, and they look like they're scared out of their minds, you know. And I announce to the whole band, I say, Oh my gosh, guys, look at these idiots right here, you know. And my wife's like, What do you mean, idiots? She said, That's what we're going to do. And I thought, Oh no. I don't want to go rafting anymore. And some of you are thinking that right now. You signed up for ministry. You signed up to serve. And then you get there and you're like, oh, no. I don't want to do this. This is too big of a commitment. This is taking up all of my time. I don't think I'm capable of this. And the anxiety and the fears, you let them creep in. Boy, I'm going to tell you, I got really nervous about what I was going to do. And we get there, we're in a gravel parking lot, and they give you a group and a group number. How many of you have been rafting before? You know what I'm talking about, right? And you're sitting there in a group, and you're waiting for your guide, your captain, to come get you, you know? And so we're standing there, and there was a guy named Travis that was there with me in the group. And he had on a pair of Air Force One Nike tennis shoes, fresh out of the box. Blue jean shorts down to his knees, and he had a polo on, and he had a a gold necklace, you know, hanging there, you know. He just went to the barber shop. He was looking crisp and clean, you know. And I said, Travis, looking sharp, man. I said, hey, bro, where's your swimsuit at? And he says, I didn't bring a swimsuit. And I said, you didn't bring a swimsuit? And he was like, uh-uh. I said, 
Why not? He said, well, we're not going to get wet. He said, we're going rafting. We ain't going swimming. I said, that's what I said. He said, yeah, I don't even own a swimsuit. I said, why is that? He said, I don't know how to swim. I thought, oh, no, Travis, you're going to die today, right? So long, Travis, you know. And I'm standing there, I'm like, oh, no. And all of a sudden, I see him, the guide. He walks across the parking lot. And this is what happened. He looked like he had come out of a Bass Pro Shop. He had his rafting clothes on, and he struts through the parking lot, and then he sees me. And he leans in, and he begins to smile, you know. And he gave me that look like, oh, yeah, big boy, you're mine today. As he licked his lips, he was like, oh, yeah, you're mine, you know. And I thought, oh, I hope, I, I hope we don't get that guide. And that was the exact guide we got. He called our number. I thought, oh, no. We said, come on, we're going to do a tutorial on the raft. We go over to the little area. And he says, all right, here's the raft. I said, wait a minute, what do you mean? I said, what is that? He said, that's the raft. I said, where's the rest of it? He said, that's it. I said, oh, no, we don't have enough raft. He said, oh, yeah, I do this every week. We got enough. I was like, oh. And this is how he started the tutorial. He said, when you get thrown out of the raft, it wasn't a, hey, how you doing? How's your mama and them? It wasn't none of that. It was when you get thrown out of the raft. I thought, boy, we're not starting off on the right foot here, right? Get your body to the top of the water, and I want you to put your feet out in front of you so you can kick off the rocks that come your way. He said, we're going to practice. Everybody, get down on your back. We got down on our back. He said, put your feet up in the air. I thought I was at a birthing class or something. Have my feet up in the air. He said, but just start to kick off the rocks. And we began to kick off the rocks. It's the first time I saw my feet in a long time, you know. And I'm sitting there, I'm kicking off the rocks. And he says, all right, everybody up. He said, good. Now we're going to give you your part in the raft. He says, all right. He points to Travis. He said, Travis, you get to the front. I said, hey, <laughs> Travis don't know how to swim. He said, I don't have time for your questions right now. <laughs> Travis, get to the front. I said, so long, Travis, you know. <laughs> Come here, big boy. He puts everybody on the raft. He gets, me on the, he gets me on the side, you know, and I sit down. And when I did the raft, I began to lift up in the air with everybody on it. I thought, oh, no. He said, we got to get this weight distribution a little bit better. Come here. This ain't your place. You need to get back here in this back corner right here and he fanned everybody else out across the raft he's like okay I think this is gonna work you know he was like big boy I need you to stay in your spot do you understand me I said yeah it's vital to the raft that you get in your spot do you understand me yes okay okay he gave, gave us a paddle he said all right when I say this you're gonna paddle to the left Practice, you know, we practice. And when I say this, you're going to paddle to the right. And when I say duck, I want you to put the paddle over your head. I want you to duck your body down as far as you can go into the raft. <laughs> Let's practice. Duck, you know. I could not physically get my body down into the raft. I thought, oh, this ain't going to work. I said, hey, I ain't going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to do this. And he said, I said, duck. I said, I am ducking. He said, you're really going to struggle today. I thought, oh, everybody up. He gets it. We get on the bus, put the raft on the bus. We drive to a shed. You know, we get out. Go get your helmet. Go get your life preserver. So I go in. Where's the plus size life vest at, you know? And I finally find one, and I put it on. And when I did, it got to about my armpits. And I thought, oh, this don't fit. And he was like, that's as big as we got. You're going to have to make it fit. Two people got on the side of me and they began to stretch it. <laughs> well, another person put their foot right there <laughs> and they begin to press with their toes on me. You know, and I don't like toes, you know, and they stretch them and they finally get the thing clicked. And when they did, that life vest shot up on me like a crop top, you know, and it threw my arms up in the air. How many of you ever seen a Christmas story? Ralphie's brother Randy, I can't put my arms down, you know what I'm talking about? I had my arms up in the air. Now, I'm Pentecostal, but I wasn't trying to praise the Lord in that moment, right? Everybody's got their phone out. Look at Brooks, you know. I thought, this is not going to fit me. This is not going to work. We got on the bus anyway. 
we take out to the river. We get there, we get the raft, and a guy on a kayak, the guy said, before we push off, let's let this guy go. He goes by himself down the river on a kayak, hits a little rough patch of water, goes over the crest. I never saw him again. I looked at Travis and I said, Travis, this is it. This is how we go, you know. We're going to die out here today, you know. How many of you have been through rough patches in your life where you thought, I'm not going to make it? I don't think I can make it out of this. Just when I thought, I can't do this, Captain, he gave his orders. He said, everybody get in your place. We get in our place and we push off and there we go on the journey down the river that was flowing. The water began to chop a little bit harder, turned white, white water rafting, you know. We hit a rough patch and we're about to go over the edge into this rapid. I'll never forget. He said, all right, here we go. Duck. Everybody ducked except for me. I hung out of the raft like one of those fan advertising things you see on the side of the road, you know. And I was screaming out of my mind, ah, you know. And I thought, this is it. My life flashed before my eyes. But just when I thought it was the end, that flushes us out of it. And I realized something. I was alive. Can I tell you today you're alive? He woke you up. He put breath in your body. He gave you a purpose and a reason today. You're alive today. I was alive. And I turned to the guy and I said, oh, I'm so thankful that's over with. And he said, over with? He said, wait till you see the next one. It's a real doozy. I thought, oh no, I shouldn't be out here, you know. We're going down the river. He's telling us to go to the left. We're going to the right. He's telling us to go to the right. We're going to the left. He's telling us to duck. I'm not ducking. The raft's not getting down the river the way it needs to. We're getting stuck on rocks. He's having to get out and push us off rocks. We're getting kicked to the side. I see the empty rafts the whole way down the river of people that didn't make it. Probably because they didn't follow the instruction of the captain. I find it interesting that when I talk to people, can I tell you, everybody's got problems. Everybody in here's got problems. Can I tell you, I got problems today. But if you were to take a good hard look at your problems and things, some of it's out of your control, but a lot of it's probably maybe because you hadn't followed the instruction of the guide. I promise you, Pastor Ricky's on his way back. He, he gives you instruction on how to live your life right here in his word. An answer for everything. It's a manual here, right? We're not getting anywhere. Living free is not, never going to get from here to there if we don't follow the instruction of the guide. I'll never forget, I'm sitting there and it's a mess. And we go up to another rapid and he said, all right, you remember that doozy I was telling you about? Here it is. Duck! And again, everybody ducks. We go down into the rapid. Here's what happened this time. I flew out of the raft, but my feet got hung up inside the raft. So I'm out of the raft, but my feet, and I'm under the water. My swimsuit had shot up on me like a bikini bottom, you know. And, I, and I'm sitting there, and I'm under the water, and I'm telling you right now, I was in full panic mode. I was blah, 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 you know. Opened my eyes, my contact lenses went away, and I never saw them again, right? And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, this is it. I'm a goner. Where's Travis, you know? And about that time, I'm just about to black out, and all of a sudden, I see two hands. They plunge into the water. They grab me up by my crop top. They pull me out, and it's the guide. He had rescued me, and he said, you got to stay with me. You're not listening to me. You're going to die out here if you don't listen to me. And I'm coughing up water. And I think to myself, maybe my wife will comfort me with her words. And I look over at her. And this is what she said. She said, oh my gosh, you are so embarrassing. (laughs) 
Then she looked down. She said, oh, your thighs are so white, you know. She said, the God is telling you what to do, and you're doing the complete opposite. He's telling you to go to the left. You're going to the right. He's telling you to go to the right. You're going to the left. He tells us to duck, and I don't know what you're doing. And the guy leans down, and he said, she's right, you know. She's right. He said, big boy, I got to tell you something. If you don't do your part, we are never going to get there. We are never going to get there the way we need to get there. He said, the whole raft, they're looking to you. Whether you know it or not, they're looking to you. They're looking to you in your workplace. Your unsaved kids, they're looking to you whether you know it or not. You have a part to play. And they may not get it today, and they may not follow the way they need to today, but I'm going to tell you there's going to come a time, once they've seen you model it enough, they will do their part as well. They'll buy in to what the guide is saying. I'll never forget, I thought, well, maybe I should do what he's saying. So here's what I did. If he told me to go to the left, I started my best to do, go to the left. To the right, I paddled to the right. If he told me to duck, it wasn't pretty, buddy, but I tried my best. And you know what happened? That raft began to move the way it needed to move across the water. We began to get somewhere. He said, we're getting somewhere. And the whole time, here's what's happening. He's giving his charge. He's giving his orders. But it's to us, the people in the raft, that are moving it along the river. And the whole time, here's what he's doing. He don't have his eyes on us. He has his eyes out on the water ahead. And he's looking. He's looking. And I thought, what's he looking at? He's looking. Scanning the river the whole time. Scanning the river the whole time. We get down the river some more. He said, hey, big boy, you're doing good. There's another rapid coming up here. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to tell everybody to duck, but I don't want you to duck. I was like, okay, what do you want me to do? He's like, I want you to throw your body to the left as far as you can and as hard as you can. I said, you want me to do what? I want you to throw your body to the left. Do you understand that? I was like, no, not really, you know. How many of the Lord's ever told you to do something and you think, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life? This don't even make sense. Can I tell you his ways are not our ways? Can I tell you that he always knows better, even when we don't understand it? He is all-knowing, and he knows what's best for you because he's a good father, right? And so we're going, and I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to do what he says. And we get closer and closer, and he said, here it goes. Are you ready? And he says, duck, and he taps me on the shoulder as we go down the rapid. And here's what I do. I throw my body to the left as hard as I could. And here's what happened. I threw myself head over heels completely out of the raft. Completely airborne. And I get sucked under the water. And I'm telling you right now, I was in full on panic mode. Because I'm hitting rocks left and right. My head, I'm telling you, I'm getting bloodied, buddy. I'm talking about getting beat up. I've never been hit like I was being hit. And I couldn't breathe. I'm telling you. I was under there and I'm, I, I, I literally thought, I am not going to make it today. And I'll never forget as I'm in my full-on panic mode, I remember words ringing out of my ears. And it was the words of the captain. When you get thrown out of the raft when you get thrown out of the raft it ain't a matter of if it's a matter of when for you you're going to go through some hard stuff when you get thrown out get your body to the top get to the light right 
I threw my body to the top. I got my feet out in front of me, just like he said. And you know what happened? When I did that, he was exactly right. I quit getting beat up, and I began to control the situation. I began to kick off every rock that came my way. I was able to navigate through it. And then all of a sudden, here's what happened. It flushes me out into a smooth patch of water. And I, again, I thought, I made it through it. But I didn't see the raft anywhere. It was long gone. And I'm thinking, man, I'm dead in the water. Some of you came in here today and maybe you think I'm dead in the water. It's not working out. I thought, man, I'm dead in the water. But then all of a sudden it happened. I looked down the river and I see a little helmet bobbing. <laughs> and I thought, huh. And I get over there to it and it was my sister-in-law who had went on the raft with us. And she looked at me, and this is what she said. She said, well, this is just great. She said, you threw yourself out of the raft, and you threw everybody else out of the raft, too. I had thrown everybody but my wife out of the raft. Somehow she held on. <laughs> and I looked at her, and I said, where's Travis? <laughs> She said, I don't know. I said, he died, didn't he? She said, probably. <laughs> she said, I don't know what we're going to do. We're lost. We're lost. Kenzie, if you want to come play. I'll never forget, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, man, I don't know what to do. All of a sudden, down the by river behind me, I look and over the crest comes a raft full of people that I had never seen before. And I found out something interesting. That raft had a guide on it too. And I found out in that moment what the guide had been looking at because I, I look and I see him and he's scanning the water ahead and then all of a sudden it happened. He caught me with his eye. And he stands up and he says, there they are. They're lost. Pick them up. Pick them up. Here comes the raft. You know in the Titanic where they said the women and children first? I threw that logic out the window. I grabbed my sister-in-law as they pull her in by her life vest and I throw her off of it. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm going home today. Grab me by my crop top. Pull me in, you know. And they pull me up, you know, and pull me into the raft. And I get, it, I get there and... I turned around behind me and there was a little lady there and she was in my spot, you know. And I said, hey, you're going to have to move. You're in my place, you know. She said, huh, this is my spot. I said, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I said, trust me. It's good for the whole raft if I get in my spot. This is where he told me to go. And she said, well, I'm not moving. So here's what I did. I, I, I leaned down and I began to move her out of my way. And I got my place. And some of you, I know that's funny today, but I had to paint a picture for you today and tell you something. Some of you can't get in your place because you got things in the way. Whether it's an addiction, whether it's a, a hang-up of some kind, a complex, maybe, maybe anxiety has stricken you, maybe it's depression, maybe, maybe it's a greedy spirit. Maybe you're the type of person that you've got a bad attitude. Man, nobody likes anybody with a bad attitude. You can't do your part because you got all this other junk in the way. Maybe it's a relationship you don't need. You got to find your spot. You got to push that junk out of the way. You got to get your place. You got to do the best you can. So I got my spot and I got my paddle and I looked at the guy and I said, I want to go home. He said, I do too. I said, well, let's go. He said, you heard him. And here's what happened. He gave his charge and here's what I did in the raft. I began to echo what the captain was saying. And some of you, you have no clue. You need to echo what the Lord is telling you. He gave you a voice. I began to echo. He said, go to the left. I said, the guide said, go to the left. Go to the right. The captain said, go to the right. Duck, he said to duck. That raft began to move across the water so quick, 
so straight. It was like poetry in motion. We were working as one unit and we were getting down the river. I'll never forget this. So all of a sudden we came to the end. And there was a hill and the van was parked on it. And there they are, everybody from my original raft. They're watching as we come in. And there he is in the middle at the top, my guide. And this is what he did. And he began to shout and he began to celebrate. I knew you would. I knew you could do it. I knew you would make it. You made it. I wonder today what heaven's going to be like when we pull up on the shore and there they are, all of heaven celebrating. And there he is, Jesus. And he's saying, I knew you could. I knew if you did your part. I knew if you followed my word. I knew you would make it. I know it was rough. But I was with you. What a day that's going to be, right? I'll never forget, I got out and I walked up to him and he put his arm around me. And I said, I made it. He said, yeah. I said, I got to ask you a question. I said, you told me to throw myself to the left. And I did. I threw myself out. I threw everybody else out too. And he began to laugh and he said, yeah, I do that from time to time. And I said, why? Why? And he said, I just wanted you to taste the river. I knew that if I let you taste the river, you would always be looking for me on the raft. Can I tell you, he allows you to go through hard moments. He'll allow you to taste a little bit of defeat. So you'll know how sweet the victory is when you get there. Will we stand across this room? Can we stand across this room? Heads bowed, eyes closed today. I had to paint a picture for you today. I had to tell you, the river is always flowing. The river of life is always flowing. But can I tell you, the guide is with us on the journey. The guide, he told me. Had I not let you be thrown out you would have never gotten in that other raft and he said that raft wouldn't have made it had you not been in it with him so you're here now but there may be one day he puts you somewhere else with a different set of people but can I tell you wherever you go in this life the guide will be with you always right now if you're physically able can you just put your hands in the air lift them to heaven today because I want to pray over you today and here's what I want as you lift your hands just as a sign of surrender you're planting the flag to say I will do my part I will find my place wherever it is and whatever it looks like I will do what he's called me to do I will follow the instructions he's given me I will echo what the father is saying right now father